Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be the kingdom, now and forever. Amen. There is one body and one spirit. There is one Lord, and God, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Keep, O Lord, your household, the church, in your steadfast faith and love, that through your grace we may proclaim your truth with boldness and minister your justice with compassion for the sake of our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will take a sprig from the lofty top of a cedar. I will set it out. I will break off a tender one from the topmost of its young twigs. I myself will plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain height of Israel I will plant it in order that it may produce boughs and bear fruit and become a noble cedar. Under it, every kind of bird will live. In the shade of its branches will nest winged creatures of every kind. All the trees of the field shall know that I am the Lord. I bring low the high tree. I make high the low tree. I, I dry up the green tree and make the dry tree flourish. I, the Lord, have spoken. I will accomplish it. The word of the Lord. Please read along with me Psalm number 92 in your bulletin or on page 720 of the Book of Common Prayer. It is a good thing to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to tell of your loving kindness early in the morning and of your faithfulness in the night season, on the psaltery and the lyre, and to the melody of the heart. For you have made me glad by your acts, O Lord, and I shout for joy because of the works of your hands. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree, and shall suffer all the seeds of the earth. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of God. They shall still be a fruit in old age. They shall be green and succulent. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. We are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For all of us must bear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we try to persuade others. But we ourselves are well known to God, and I hope that we are also well known to your consciousness. We are not commending ourselves to you again, but giving you an opportunity to boast about us, so that we may be able to answer those who boast in outward appearance and not in heart. For the love of Christ urges us on, because we are convinced that the one who has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all, so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. The word of the Lord. Thank you. 
you'd like to join along and sing with me, it's hymn, or song number 139 in the Alleluia, the Yellow Book. Second verse. Ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said the kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. God, the holy and undivided Trinity. Amen. Amen. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Let's start there. <laughs> it is no secret that I am a fan of the Apostle Paul, and very often will just grab those little sentences and latch on to them. This is one that I think very succinctly explains what's going on here. What is this all about? What is this thing that we do? And the answer is, that for those who are in Christ, there is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Forgive me, sometimes I slip into the King James phrasing and forget all about the New Revised Standard. The point is, we are all of us made new. We see this world in a new and different way. And once you see these things, at least for me, once I saw these things in Paul's letters, that that's the point, that it really is that simple. If you're in Christ, there's a new creation. Oh, well, that's easy. I can do that. <laughs> well, the hard part comes later. But it's all throughout there. You know, Paul will talk about if you've been baptized into Christ, you have put on Christ. I take a great deal of comfort in that. It's like, yeah, that'll protect you. 
That'll keep out the rain and the cold. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. There's something to think about. about this and we get pretty much all of our baptismal theology from these sentences from Paul is that once we are in Christ we're no longer the people that we used to be our citizenship is no longer in Corinth or Rome or Huntsville or the United States or Birmingham or Mobile or wherever we may be from our citizenship is with Christ in the kingdom of God. It's a pretty big deal, right? I get excited about that. I, I'm always afraid that when I say it that way, people are going to say, okay, nope, that's not for me. I'm out. <laughs> because I have been tempted many times to say, nope, not for me. I'm out. <laughs> I can't do this. But the thing is, we begin to learn as we go through this walk together and there's another good important concept from Paul is we're not by ourselves we are all in this together we've all been baptized into the body of Christ we're not just a you know just a bunch of people running around doing our own thing we've been made a community we've been made into something new and we recognize that no the kingdom of God is yet to be fulfilled, but what's to stop us from going ahead and living as if it were already here? From going ahead and embracing this knowledge that, yes, indeed, there is a new creation. That we are new. We are different. We have been restored who we were always meant to be in the beginning. We're being made into the people that God always called us to be. It's what Christ's love does. It changes us. And even if there's tension between kind of, well, what we expect to be fulfilled and how things are playing out right here in the real world, we can still embrace that newness. We can embrace that new creation and we can say along with Paul, behold, <laughs> all things have been made new. I will be the first to say we don't always understand that. That something about where we are, 21st century, it can be hard for us to get that. Because we're all going to be asking questions. Well, how does this kingdom of God thing work? And I'll let you in on a secret. The reason Jesus always talked in parables is because Jesus couldn't just express in plain language what it meant. I mean, I do think that when Paul says there is a new creation in baptism, he means pretty much the same thing Jesus meant when Jesus said, repent for the kingdom of God has come near to you. There's a turn around and go the other way invitation. An invitation into this bizarre countercultural movement that grew up around Jesus. <laughs> Keep Christianity weird. I will say that again. Keep Christianity weird. We don't need to apologize for that. We need to acknowledge, though, that we can't always explain it. Hence, the parables for Jesus. Well, the kingdom of God is like somebody that's planted seeds and then they get impatient and they go out and look every night to see, is anything growing yet? Is anything growing yet? Is anything growing yet? And then when it's time, they sprout and you harvest them. We don't know how that happens. And the miracle of love that we find in Christ how all things are being made new. 
The kingdom of God, Jesus says, is like this. It's like a mustard seed. I don't know about y'all, but I, have, I find yard work in the South particularly frustrating. Isabel and I spent several hours outside yesterday cutting back some things that are supposed to be shrubs, but somebody let them grow into trees. And I'm like, man, I'm sorry, Jesus, I can't celebrate that mustard seed right now. <laughs> I cannot do it. It's like kudzu, right? The kingdom of God is like kudzu. And you know the joke, how do you plant kudzu? Go out in the middle of a 40-acre field and drop some kudzu seeds and run. <laughs> That's what the kingdom of God is like. The kingdom of God is about abundance, an abundance of love, an abundance of grace, an abundance of forgiveness. And it's about new life. That's why we're here. That's why we celebrate, especially joyfully, on days when there's a baptism, because we are celebrating that love and that grace and that forgiveness and that new life. So we're just going to click our heels and jump up and down about Cooper and his baptism today and we're going to rejoice and we're going to go away from here and share this good news. It's going to stick with us because we are people who believe that God works through the things of this world water and oil, bread and wine. And we get that when we're in church. Oh yeah, the Holy Spirit shows up. Yeah, that, that's true. Yeah, water, oil, bread and wine, I get it. Baptism, Holy Eucharist, we got it. But I think sometimes we forget it when we move out there. And what helps us is remembering what Paul says about that new creation not just limited to here. It's not just limited to here. God is doing this work everywhere. Sacramental life means being open to the possibility, not just the possibility, but the reality that God works through the things of this world, even if they're outside the walls of the church, that God works through these things to get our attention and it helps us to see the world in a new way. I will tell y'all just briefly a little story. I don't know if I've ever told this one here, um, but that's okay if I have. Y'all have just heard it before and that'll be okay. Long time ago, felt like a long time ago, I was already in discernment for holy orders, but I was full of questions and not sure, okay, do I really wanna be a priest in the Episcopal Church? I don't know about that. Having trouble articulating a sense of call, having trouble articulating what is this story all about. And I was driving in Birmingham one day. I think I was on my way from Avondale to the parish office at St. Andrews. And I was listening to the Beastie Boys. And there was a song I had heard many times and it caught me, hooked me. You know, that's why it's a hook, right? The hook caught me. A song called Alive. And MCA and Ad-Rock and Mike D are encouraging everyone listening to think in a new way, to see in a new way and to hear in a new way. Dip, dip, dive, so socialize, open up your ears and clean out your eyes. If you learn to love, you're in for a surprise. It can be nice to be alive. And what happened with me, as I was preparing to meet with the bishop and all these things are saying, do you really want to do this? Is that caught me. And I kept hitting, this was back in the days when you had like a six disc CD changer in your car before I could just plug in my phone and listen to music. But I kept hitting reverse, listening to that over and over and over again. Because it struck me in the same way that that verse from 2 Corinthians does, that if we're in Christ, there is a new creation. I think that MCA and Adrock and Mike D, surprising as it may seem, 
were on to the same good news that Paul was, saying the same thing that Paul was, saying, no, it really is this simple. If you learn to love, you're in for a surprise. And so that's what we talk about. That's why we rejoice. That's why we dance around and jump up and down and say, yes, 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 Cooper's about to be baptized. And that's the good news that we are sharing today. Amen. The candidate for holy baptism will now be presented. I'm ready. <laughs> Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? I will, with God's help. Will you, by your prayers and witness, help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? I will, with God's help. Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? I renounce them. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your savior? I do. do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? I do. do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? I do. Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support Cooper in his life in Christ? Let us join with Cooper who is committing himself to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. And I will invite y'all to stand. <laughs> Do, you Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? In God the Holy Spirit. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will, will you persevere in resisting evil and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. 
Let us now pray for Cooper, who is to receive the sacrament of new birth. Deliver him, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Truth. Lord, Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Fill him with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Keep him in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Teach him to love others in the power of the spirit. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Send him into the world and witness to your love. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Bring him to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O Lord, that all who were baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who are here cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Cooper, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and now this will be easier. Yeah. <clears throat> Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit, you have bestowed upon this your servant the forgiveness of sins, and have raised him to the new life of grace. Sustain him, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give him an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage and will to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. 
Amen. No. One more thing. Cooper, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Try his head off a little bit. Okay. Thank you. Ah. Thanks. to you, Jen. These are cards for the godparents and card members. Thank you. All right, Katie. Back up front. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We receive you into the household of God, confess the faith of Christ crucified, proclaim his resurrection, and share with us in his eternal priesthood. The peace of the Lord be always with you. So, I will keep announcements to a minimum. It's good to see everybody, and it's good to see y'all. And we, again, we will rejoice <laughs> in Cooper's baptism. So, thank you all for being here to share in that with us. So, again, announcements to a minimum. Most everything this week will look like other weeks. We added one thing. I am going to be meeting... Um, with acolytes and limbs and anyone who is interested in serving at the altar on Wednesday at 6.30 here in the church to talk about things like choreography. Sorry, I did my field ed in a, in a parish that was an off-Broadway theater, so yeah, theater language just kind of sneaks into you know, my liturgical language. But anyway, if anyone is, has not served before and is interested in serving, You'd be welcome to join us, but that's going to happen Wednesday at 6.30 here in the church. My plan is to meet um, with the Altar Guild before my vacation. I'm taking July for vacation, by the way. Surprise. <laughs> um, um, and then to meet with ushers and lectors following my vacation. So we're just going to be talking about, you know, just liturgical things. And so anyone who's interested in serving in any of those ministries... It's never too late to let me know. And also, if you're interested in singing, playing an instrument, n never a wrong time to let Donna know. So that's really all I have for, as far as announcements go. Purely practical announcement. We are about to have Holy Communion, and I will say that all the baptized, regardless of tradition or denomination, are welcome to receive communion in this church. So, that's being said, everyone is welcome to receive what we have been doing because the bishop has asked us to do it this way, is receiving um, the cup via intention. So there'll be just a little bit of wine in the bottom. And if y'all could dip your wafer into the wine rather than drinking from the cup, that's the bishop's.
preference for right now. And I will also say you don't have to receive the cup at all. If you're not comfortable receiving the cup, just pass it by. The sacrament is complete in either kind. So all that being said, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, because in Jesus Christ our Lord you have received us as your sons and daughters, made us citizens of your kingdom and given us the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with blessed Stephen and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The peace of God with the Peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. <laughs>